thank God for his grace. Listen, I just feel like I need to continue where we were last week. Uh, chase the lion. There was still some meat on the bone that uh, God got me to share with you. So we're going to continue where we were last week. Chase the lion. Now, they say that the lion is the king of the jungle. They say nobody, nobody can mess with the lion. And so if you're going to chase the lion, I can just hear the devil saying to you, how are you going to chase the king of the jungle? How are you going to be like Benania? The Bible must be off. You can't chase no lion. But did you know when we stick together, there are even animals in the jungle that defeat lions. You don't believe me, do you? Roll my video. Show them my video. I got 60 seconds to show you something. 60 seconds. Yeah. I should have cued y'all better. <laughs> I'm sorry. That video, the first 60 seconds, we're going to show you. Yeah, even the lions can get a run for their money. The big ones or the small ones can get a run for their money. Uh-huh. Yep, see that lion running right now. Last week, okay, here we go. I'm worried we're not going to get off this island. Hey, no, that's have... definitely not my video. Yeah, that one might be, that's a commercial. All right, they're going to get through that. There we go. Sorry, AV team, I sprung that on you too. Yeah. Okay, here you go. That's all I want to show. I got about an hour of footage like that. That's all I want to show. Listen, the lion's supposed to be the king of the jungle, and a buffalo, those are buffalo, buffalo full of meat, steaks, and everything else, the lions come with for them. But the buffalo recognize if they stick together, they keep their babies behind them, and they come at them lions, the lions lose most of the time. What am I saying to you? We're facing some lions in our life. You got some things that seem impossible. And the lion go for the one that's out away from the herd, the stragglers. But when you stay with the crowd, woo, that's why you came to church today. That's why some of you came online. You're not from here, but you online. When you stay with the crowd and use what you got. Some of them buffaloes were chasing lions. I saw one footage. I don't have time. I could do it all day. There was a baby buffalo getting eaten by the lions. The mama and the daddy and others came, ran, and threw those lions away. They were trying to get them, almost had them down, but they chased them away. Listen, my brothers and sisters, it's all kinds of things going on. Last week, I made it personal about our lives. But when I look, this week, it's been a beautiful week. There's some things that happen that make the school possible, that make the vision possible. I can't, give, can't divulge everything because some eggs I got to sit on until they hatch. All right? Once they hatch, I'll tell you all the details. But I'm going to keep sitting on my eggs because it's about 5,000 people watching too. All right. But there's a lot of things that's going on in the world. I got here even right now Whole Foods just this week on uh, July the 20th. They're going to go to a hand scan to pay for your food at Whole Food. Y'all do know that, right? Whole Food and Panera Bread. They're getting ready for you to, it just, you know, they're not going to start the market of the beast all the same day. They're going to phase you in and make you think it's normal. You're going to go to Whole Foods where, you, you know, the good food's supposed to be, and the hand scan is implemented in all their scores across America. Yeah. Uh, we see even right now, what's the man's name? Uh, for OpenAI, the chat GPT guy, Sam Altman, that's his name, right? Sam Altman, they're pushing 
to, uh, to get a global ID to, you, to get their cryptocurrency. Not only is it digital currency, I done taught on all this, so I'm just going through the news, what's happening, because there ain't no sense. There is a conspiracy spirit that the devil is trying to take down God's people. That's a conspiracy. Yeah, they, they, they want you to have a retinal scan to be able to get money in cryptocurrency. Uh, that, that, that they're worried about personhood to determine whether you are a bot or a human because of artificial intelligence. So now you'll be able to give your retinal scan soon, they're gonna want something else. Uh, China is accusing the United States of turning Taiwan into a powder keg. I didn't put all this in my slides. This, I just pulled it up on my phone, that's all. China accusing the US of a powder keg and the White House announces new military aid package to Taiwan. Ta uh, China say we still going to take them. There's uh, global implications that's happening there. In addition to that, uh, there are people that are talking about the heat wave, and they're going to use heat wave, climate change, to talk about climate change. And when they talk about climate change, it's really going to be things about controlling humans. Uh, hello, somebody. They ain't talking about, just like, just like, oh, yeah, just like a while ago, they were talking about helping people from a virus, and it didn't have nothing to do with the virus. Uh, I know I'm telling the truth. That, so you got to be careful because the world did, the world did, the word did tell us that climate is going to change. And part of it is the wrath of God, the seals of God that are being unleashed on the land. And don't get distracted about LeBron's son having a heart attack, how he had it, why he had it. But people are talking about, was it the vaccine? Was it not the vaccine? That's what people are talking about. I don't know what that boy had. We got to pray for him. But I will tell you, there is a high rate of people strangely having heart attacks out of nowhere. There's a high rate of blood clots attacking folks out of nowhere. There's a high rate of people having um, uh, uh, autoimmune diseases out of nowhere. This didn't just come from me. I taught the medical folks. This stuff just happening. I talked to doctors and all kinds of folks. This is happening. So we don't know what happened to him, but don't get distracted. What about LeBron, son? The bottom line is we pray for them. We pray for their family. I wouldn't want that on anybody. But one thing for sure, we need to pray because our time is short. We see that Russia and Ukraine, Russia today in the news, this is today. I got this uh, today. Russia is saying that they're going to use nuclear weapons in Ukraine. They're going to shoot. They just shot a supersonic missile at one of their, uh, their like their equivalent of their CIA building. We see uh, everybody talking about Jamie Foxx was cloned. I don't know if Jamie Foxx was cloned. Uh, that's not our business. But isn't it interesting that Jamie Foxx got a movie about being cloned? But the bottom line is, man or child, Jamie Foxx got a movie about being cloned. I know he came out of being sick, light skin. Yeah, that might happen if you was stuck up in the house the whole time. His head shaped a little different. But uh, the bottom line is that man is trying to manipulate science to do all kinds of things. I don't know what happened to Jamie Foxx, but don't get distracted all day worried about Jamie Foxx. You better be worried about your soul. That's what I'm trying to tell you. We don't know Jamie. I don't know Jamie. I don't know what's happening with that. Uh, people angry. We see the world, how wicked it is. How can the world be angry at a man and the people who put out a movie against human trafficking and they mad? The people who are supposed to be against human trafficking are mad at people for doing a movie about human trafficking. That shows you how evil they are. Oh, they're upset. They're really upset. They said that, that the movie about human trafficking can increase human trafficking. Huh? That don't even make sense. That don't even make sense. Unless you just, now, now, if you're new here, it might make sense to you because you watch TMZ and all that other kind of stuff. You watch, you know, the news channels. But we recognize that everything they saying on television uh, and on the news channels, most of it is lies. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, uh, families are angry about people who are trying to protect children from being castrated. Boys having their testicles cut off, girls having their mammaries gland cut off in the name of gender affirming health care. Do y'all remember just a few days ago, everybody was mad at Africa for uh, uh, not all of Africa, but certain African countries that were uh, circumcising girls? Do y'all remember that? Movie stars, oh, you, you can't circumcise. The circumcision of girls, uh, just if, to remind you, is when they were cut a piece of the clitoris of a girl as she became a woman with a razor. And they called it mutilation. Do y'all remember that? 
they called it female mutilation. Pay attention now, because y'all getting nervous, some of y'all. Oh, I don't want to hear. They, they called it female mutilation because they cut a piece of clitoris. Now, I don't condone that. I don't think that was good. These people said it was part of their culture going back time immemorial. And people came against them. They flew in planes, raised money, and went and told the governments, you better stop doing this. This is inhumane. This is butchery. You Africans are, d- 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 are butchering these young girls. Do y'all remember that? And now they're taking a whole vagina out of a girl. And it's supposed to be affirming. Wait a minute. They were cutting a piece of the girl before, and all the people that was against that are now for. <laughs> see, because, see, they don't say what it is when they tell you what they're doing. They take the girl's vagina, take it all the way out, take muscles out of her arm to create a penis on her body, put a pump in it. She got to be on medication for the rest of her life. She usually becomes suicidal after it happens. Or they cut the testicles and the penis off of a boy, put a hole, put a prosthesis up in there, and then call that a vagina. And we're supposed to take that as affirming. My wife said something to me that blessed me. My wife said, if your 10-year-old said that they identify as a pirate, would you go cut off their hand and put a hook on their arm? Would you cut off their leg and give them a peg leg? Would you pop their eye out and give them a patch because they affirm as a pirate? Because that's what they felt like doing? He affirms as a pirate. I want to support him. He may be suicidal if I don't support him as a pirate. What do you tell that child who says, I feel like a pirate? Shut up, boy. You ain't no pirate. This ain't Pirates of the Caribbean. Well, all of a sudden, a boy can say he's a girl, and you cut off his testicles at 10? Give him castration. And so we got some lions that's around it. That's where I'm at. And I'm glad the children are here because some who the children here. They're hearing it in the kindergarten. At other schools, they need to hear this. You cannot protect your children from this because they're coming for them. Because they know if they can have stupid parents that allow the system to do this, it's irreparable harm for the rest of their life. So now you have people who are trying to, first of all, there's no such thing. I'm, I'm about to get off this, but I'm stuck for a minute. There's so much, you cannot transition, a male cannot transition into a female. That's impossible. You still gonna have the chromosomes of a male. You can't transition. I can't transition a female no more than I can't transition to a whale. I am what I was born to be. I can't just, ooh, I'm Shamu. Oh, I'm Shamu. Ooh. I can identify as a whale all I want to. Sometimes I feel like a whale after eating all of Sharon's cornbread. I eat the whole skillet and I feel kind of whaleish but I'm still a human, no matter how I feel. Hallelujah. These are the things that we're facing and more. So many other things. And so we sit here and say, chase the lion. Let me just review just a minute. I'm pushing. Let me just review just for a moment what we talked about last week. If you weren't here last week, here's the episodes. We, we first read from the scripture. We read from the scripture in 2 Samuel chapter 23. 2 Samuel chapter 23, we read from the scripture. Let's now, let's look uh, at verse 20. Let's just read it. Benania was the son of Jehoiada, the son of a valiant man from Kabizel who had done many deeds. He killed two lion-like heroes of Moab, and he also had gone down and killed a lion in the midst of a pit on a snowy day. This is where we got it from. This man was bad. He killed two ugly men. They had to be ugly. They looked like lions. And then he killed, and there was preparation for what he then killed. He killed a lion, not just killed a lion, he killed a lion in a pit on a snowy day. Now, I could keep reading all the things that he did, but that, that just stood out. We saw nothing like that. And we began to say, we need to be like Benaniah, one of those great men that God called to change his nation, that God had, one of some of David's valiant men that ran with him. We need to be like that. And if we're going to be like that, we got to be willing to kill a lion in a pit on a snowy day. But if we're able to do that, we got to live a life that is regret-free. 
We got to not only be regret-free from our actions, we should be regret-free from our inaction. It's not just what we do, it's what we will regret at the end of life, what we don't do. Some of the things that we courageously could have stood up and done. Some of the things we could have done that matter. We should not live regret. And then we came to the point that holiness is more than what you don't do. Holiness really is what you do. People have reduced our walk as people of God to I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't cuss. Big deal. What are you doing going forward to change and impact and advance the kingdom? What are you doing to impact people's lives? That is what holiness is. It's not what you don't, so you don't drink. There's millions of people that don't drink. It, it, it takes an idiot to drink Hennessy or to drink any kind of liquor or beer. You already know it's a, it's a plot to jack you up. Anybody know, I mean, anybody know not to drink? <laughs> I mean, they, they pay for slavery through the liquor industry. So we don't drink. You don't smoke. I don't cuss. I don't this. That's like telling your husband or your wife, I don't cheat on you, but you don't even talk to him. I don't cheat, but I don't cheat. But you don't even tell him you love him ever. But I don't cheat. It's not what you don't do. What do you do? Hello, somebody. I know I'm making some sense. I'm making more sense than, I, than y'all letting me on to say Holiness does not involve subtraction in our lives. Greater is holiness, it involves multiplication. Uh, exponential, actually, I should say exponential, Exp ex exponents. God is more concerned with sins of omission, these things we could have and, not, and should have done. God is concerned with the things we could have done that we did not do, not just what you did. Uh, I, I, he said, if you see your brother in need and you turn and say, God be with you, where's your bowels? Open your bowels of compassion. God is not, good is not, the goodness is not the absence of badness. You can do nothing wrong, I said last week, this is the exact same slide, you can do nothing wrong and still do nothing right. You can do nothing wrong and still do nothing right. Those who simply run away from sin are incomplete Christians. We are called to be courageous and stand. Our calling is much more than simply running away from what's wrong. We're called to chase lions. Somebody say chase the lion. Chase the lion. We're called to make a difference. We're called to chase the lion. We're called to not just hide and say it's going to be okay. We recognize that if we don't kill that lion, that lion going to kill somebody else. If I don't preach the gospel, if I don't preach the truth, somebody's going to be deceived. I got to speak up the truth whether you like it or not, whether somebody else is saying it or not, whether they think it's popular or not. I got to speak the truth because somebody got to be free. We don't have the guts. When we don't have the guts, to step out on faith and chase lions, then God is robbed of the glory that rightfully belongs to him. That's a quote by Mark Batterson. When we don't have the guts to step out and walk by faith, God is robbed of glory. God want to get glory out your life, and, but if you don't do the, do, do the things God has called you, well, how, what's the glory in that you, all you do and live life is to pay rent and have a 401k, die and retire. What, what glory is that? What kind of glory is that, that I got a nice car? There's a thousand other people with the exact same car on this road. Just stand out on Goodman. You're going to see your own car ride up and down. What's the glory in that? It's nice to have your car. It's nice to do some nice things. But there got to be something more. In my no, Lord, use me to be a blessing to somebody. Lord, use me. So when people say, is there a God? You can tell them, look at me. God is using me. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. So, 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 that's review. That's review from last week. Now, the lesson for the day, and I'm almost there. The lesson for the day is three points I want to consider, and these points I gave to you last week. I picked out three of the points. If you're going to be a lion chaser, you got to defy the odds. You got to embrace uncertainty, and you got to take risks. You got to defy the odds. Come on, somebody say it. Defy the odds. Embrace uncertainty and take risks. Woo, hallelujah. First of all, you got to defy the odds. You got to defy the odds. You got to recognize that it's not, not always in your advantage. The odds are not, the odds are always against you. Hallelujah. But that, oh, but, oh, 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 but, uh, 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 first John, one, one, first John, four, comes in, four, four, comes to me. Oh, but, 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 but you have overcome, little children, little children. You have overcome, little children. He calls you overcomer, but he calls you a child. A child has no authority, has no power, is already under guardianship, but you can overcome. Well, even when the odds are against you, you have overcome, little children. Why? 
Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Oh, I'm not big enough. I ain't bad enough. I'm not smart enough. Oh, 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 so you went to college. So you got a doctor. I got a doctor too. There's a whole lot of people with doctors that's dummies. Because all you know is just a little bit. Oh, oh. All you got to know is what you know for your PhD. All you got to know is what you wrote. I know I'm telling the truth. So you got that. You don't know enough. You ain't bad enough. But guess what? When you got God on your side, the one who knows everything, everywhere, all the, oh, he's on your side. What shall we then say, Romans 8, verse 31? If God be for us, who can be against us? What shall we say if God be for us, who can be against us? There was a man named Hudson Taylor that gave this quote, and he was a man who said God called him to China to go share the gospel. He was only there about three years and died. And some of y'all say, well, what a loser. But it was because of him he opened the door for many others to come behind him. Woo, hallelujah. He said there are three stages. I love this quote. I'm going to give you a couple of quotes today. There are three stages to every great work of God. Three stages to every great work of God. Not some mediocre work. Not something that fits in. Three stages of great work of God. First stage, impossible. How do you know God gave you something? It should be impossible. Oh, Lord, have mercy. If, if it ain't impossible, God probably didn't give it to you. If you can figure out how you can do it, if you already know I got the hookups, I got some connections, I can figure it out, it probably ain't from God. But if God give you something and you can't figure out how in the world can I do that, that's, you know what size that is? That's a God-sized vision. Yeah. Woo! I want to have God-sized vision. I want to, when God give you something, I, oh, impossible. We're going to start a school, a, a church that's only three years old. With a bunch of Negroes, we're going to start a school. We're going to start a school. And guess what? The school is opening. Hallelujah. And I know, I already know, you ain't going to hurt my feelings if you don't send your child. Some of you don't trust God. You trust the man down the road. You go ahead down there. But as for us, we're going to do our God's size things and watch what God going to do. Hallelujah. Somebody had to tell the Lord, thank you. I don't know. I want my child to go there. They ain't got no swimming pool. Go down there where they got the swimming pool. Go down there with the swimming pool. But that's for us. First thing, God, what has God got before you? What do you have in front of you that's impossible? Why you got some doable things? Well, that's just doable. You need to have some impossible vision. You need to have some impossible. Now, let me tell you something. Don't nobody get inspired by people with mediocre vision anyway. Why would I get inspired with you? What's your goal for life? Pay my rent, pay off the house in 30 years. Anybody can pay the house off in 30 years. Let's, hey, baby, let's pay this house in three. That's a God size thing. Let's pay this thing off in three. Let's leverage it. Well, that ain't possible. The mortgage say 30. Let's double up. Let's go ahead and figure it out. Let's go ahead and leverage some things to pay this thing off. Why you always got to do the things the way they told you to do it? When you going to do things the way God told you to do it? When you going to go bigger? Oh, first wave. First way you know it's a God thing is impossible. Then when you take on an impossible thing, then it is difficult. It goes from impossible to difficult, then to done. Woo! Well, why my life so hard? Your life so hard because you, oh, you are, you in the NBA level. You in the NFL level of anointing. Hallelujah. It ain't supposed to be easy. Yeah, yeah. So what you can play, play NB2K, you can win the championship on, on beginner level. Go ahead and put it on all pro and see what you do. That's for my gamers. The rest of you have no idea what I'm talking about. But there's somebody here who knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. My, 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 I got a cousin. I won't say what side of the family. They all cousins. Got a cousin told me they was real good on the game, but they had been playing the game. They hadn't played humans. And they had been playing the game on easy. And then I put my son on. Go ahead, play him, son. Play him Madden. Go ahead, play him. Because at that time, I could beat my son in Madden. That changed later. At that time, I said, if you get through him, you can beat me. And my son beat him 60 to nothing at halftime. It was halftime. It was 60 to nothing in football. And he said, you ain't doing what they usually do because you've been so used to playing on easy. Oh, ooh, I know I'm preaching right now. 
You've been so used to playing on easy that when you had a real challenge, you didn't know what to do. Why do you think your life's so hard? You know why my life was so hard? You know why I went through so much hell? Because when I see you, you can't do nothing to me. I've been through it already, baby. I ain't about to cry tonight. Do you know what I've been through? You know I've been through some things. When you've been through some things, you, you ain't phased what's going on. I done lost some things. I done, I, I done, I done got turned away. People I love me done did wrong. But now, oh man, I I ain't depressed. I ain't got no anxiety. I know you don't like me, but I'm going to win anyway. See, you got to have been through something. Some of y'all, I don't want to go through nothing. That's why you can't go nowhere. You can't win no championship without no opposition. Yeah, it's supposed to be hard. It's supposed to be hard. It's going to be hard till it's done. Oh, I hope you hear what I'm saying. It ain't never going to get easy. There ain't never going to be no easy day for me to pass in this church. Because this when you get right, 10 more people going to join. <laughs> and two of them going to be your cousin. You're going to go back to acting like them. <laughs> it's not supposed to be easy. Who said it was supposed to be easy? Who told you when you got married that it was going to be like a Hallmark channel? You're supposed to go through something. Who told you when you had your babies, they were going to thank you for parenting them? They ain't going to thank you till they grown. They going to hate you. They going to think you stupid, but you got to endure any kind of way. When you got that job, who told you it was supposed to be easy? They are supposed to try to get you fired. You do it in spite of. It's impossible. It's difficult. But I, with the grace of God, it will be done. It's impossible to make it to heaven. But thanks for Jesus, he made it possible for me to be saved. I can't save myself. It's impossible for me to get saved. But thank God for Jesus. Woo! Hallelujah. This is why Psalms 119 verse 71 says, ooh, this is one of my favorite scriptures. It is good. So y'all need to change your testimony. You've been on Snapchat too long. You've been on TikTok too long. You quoting stuff you don't even know what you're quoting. I just don't know why I'm going, where is God? Because I'm going through. It was good for me that I've been afflicted. It was good that I had problems. It was good that I didn't think I could make it. That I may learn your statutes. That I may learn your laws. That I may know your ways. How many? I just need some testimonies real quick. I feel like preaching right now. I've had, I need some testimonies. It's the wrong day to wear a suit. All right. I need, I need some testimonies real quick from some folks. You was in something in your past that you didn't think you could make it through. It maybe made you suicidal. Maybe made you want to give up. But now. But now, when you look in the rearview mirror, it don't look so big no more. Now, when you look back, it ain't as bad as it was when you was in it. If that's you, you need to testify. Say something. Stand up. Shout like you came through. Woo! And the same God that brought you through that, he can bring you through this. Some of y'all got pregnant. How many of y'all remember this? You got pregnant, you thought your parents were gonna hate you. You thought everybody was gonna turn their back on you. Then you had the baby and your parents loved the baby more than anything. Who am I talking to? You thought, they was, you thought life was gonna be over? Oh Lord, have mercy. You thought about having an abortion somehow, you missed the deadline or whatever, and you had that baby, and that baby brought so much joy. Who am I talking to right now? When that girl left me, when that girl left me, I did right by her. And I said, till you do right by me. <laughs> when that girl left me, I thought it was over. Thought it was over what I do. <laughs> Acting like a stereotypical simp. <laughs> oh, Lord. I wouldn't even say, bring her back, Jesus. Bring her back. But God got rid of the girlfriend and brought me a wife. Woo! Woo! She told me I was broke. 
was supposed to be broke. I was in college. She told me I didn't have a nice car. I didn't. It was rust color. Okay, it was rusty. <laughs> she said I wasn't nothing. And she went for that guy that had money and the gold chains and the gray chest hair. But that was all right. I'm so glad she left. I'm so glad she gone because had she not left, I wouldn't have a Sharon in my life. Woo! Bye-bye. And had she stayed, I wouldn't know you. You wouldn't know. I'd be somewhere saying, there got to be more to life. Thank God it was good. It was good that I was afflicted. It was good. How many of you ever been broke? I'm talking about broke, broke. Oh, you can't appreciate having money till you've really been broke. Oh, you can't appreciate no money till you've been broke. Oh, you've been broke. You thank God when you got five dollars. I can be four for four with my five dollars and still have change. It was good that I was broke. It was good that I was catching the bus. It was good that I was walking. It was good that they talked about me. I can appreciate it now. Thank you, God, for today. Hallelujah. So if he did it right then, you got to trust him now. Oh, when the days are hard now, I'm telling you, I'm going to sleep tonight. There's a lot of things I might do. I'm going to plan. I'm going to pray. I'm going to do whatever. But you ain't about to keep me up. Because no sense in me being sleepy and jacked up. So, since, since I got to face you in the morning, I might as well get a good night of sleep and get on to work. Yep, I ain't going to stay up all night worried about Bob. I catch Bob with a good night's sleep. You ain't going to stop me from eating. I'm going to eat all what I need to eat, get my vitamins, my vitamins up in me, and then I come on to work like, how you doing, Bob? I ain't going nowhere. I shall not be moved. Some of y'all, you done let the devil whoop you on both sides. You done ate the whole thing of bluebell. <laughs> now, you're, now you're jacked up. You think you got asthma. You don't got asthma. You got OD'd on ice cream. <laughs> My, <laughs> final point, final point. No, next point. Embrace uncertainty. If you're going to chase lions, are y'all with me? You got to embrace it. And this is a serious point because I just told you what's happening in the news. Ain't nothing certain. Do y'all hear what I'm trying to tell you? Just don't it seem like just when you get it together, the playing field go off. It seemed like, you know, I, I'm, I'm, about to, I'm about to confess something to y'all. I pastored in South Africa for 12 years. I said, Lord, all these resources in America. All this wonderful stuff in the why you send me? If I had started the church, if we had started in 2004 here, when we was there, Lord, I can be somewhere now. All this around, all this land of plenty, milk and honey. But God said, it's my time. And I put y'all here during uncertain times. And then he put us in the middle of COVID. It wasn't in the middle of COVID. No, we're giving COVID too much credit. We was in the middle of the demonic scourge on the land. He put us in the middle of the plague, started us in uncertain times. We couldn't even do a church calendar because we didn't know if they had shut us down. And then people thought I was unorganized. Well, I, you know, usually you're supposed to write a calendar. I know that. But we in church semi-illegally right now. <laughs> Don't have on no mask. They say we're going to die. You talking about uncertain. Everybody say the church is dying. That's why you can't listen to folks, the prognosticators. People tell you, ain't nobody going to church. Look around you. There's a few folks going to church. Look around you. And then, okay, it's about 300 of us up in here, and there's about, uh, about, about 1,000 folks online. Who said ain't nobody going to church? Here's what it is. Ain't nobody going to no dead church. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody going to no dead church. You still telling us stories from, well, when I was a little boy, Nobody care about when you were a little boy. What did Jesus say? What's the kingdom agenda? <laughs> you put more emphasis on an on a anniversary than you do on the altar call. What do you think we're going to come for? What do you think we're going to come for your anniversary? You got 
you got to know everything, if you're going to chase lions, whoo, everything ain't going to fit according to your plan. I got a plan, and this is how it's supposed to go. This is what I learned in school. That's nice. You got a plan, and you wrote it down, and you got a vision board, which I don't know about that vision board. I got a vision. This is my vision. Did you ask God about what you put on a board? You just cut some pictures out and posted them up there and trying to manifest something. You, you semi-witch, by the way, trying to manifest what you see. You looking at the board more than you looking at God. Got pictures, of, got a whole, got 10 men cut up to make one man. He got to have a head like him, pecs like him, abs like him, thighs like her. Y'all didn't catch that, did y'all? <laughs> Everything not going to work out the way you plan it to work out. This is the first day that I can say school opening on the day before some of y'all going to school. Can't they be more organized? It wasn't until Thursday that we knew that we for sure, sure, sure could open. I hope y'all hear what I'm trying to say. Everything ain't just going to be organized. Why didn't they give us prior notice? Because we didn't have prior notice. We told you we was going to open the school, hook a crook. We told you that, didn't we? We told you the school was going to open. So I didn't have a date, but I just knew. I just knew that the Lord was going to do it. I was uncertain. Time said this. Well, I know the other school, they did. Well, the other school didn't have the mandate that we had. The other school had time. We just knew God said open it, and he didn't tell us how. So we were uncertain. So now you go home and say we so unorganized. What we are is we flow with God in his time, so it ain't always certain. So next year, we can do early enrollment in January. But this year, enrollment starts today. We start school in two weeks. That is what it is, because it's uncertain. Look at y'all. Well, I just don't have, because see, I'm professional. I'm professional. You ain't never did nothing. That's your problem. Because if you did something daring, you know. And then you ever notice, then you ever notice the people that criticize folks the most are the people who never did nothing. Ain't nothing worse than having a mama who was never a cheerleader to criticize your child that's a cheerleader. You need, to, you need to do this. You ain't never did nothing. You ain't never played no organized football, but now, now you, got, you got something to say to Jerry Jones, to all the Cowboys, the Steelers, everybody, they this, they that. He should have ran through the hole. You don't even know what the hole looked like. But those who did something, they, they less likely to criticize. They know how hard it can be. They just say, yeah, brother, keep on trying. Yeah, that hole open and close. Yeah, it's shift. You thought it was a two-hole, but you got to go down in the four-hole. Whatever it might be. Sorry for the sports analogy. I got this quote. I'm preaching. I got, I, I, I got this quote from my wife, Sharon. She always quote Corey Ten Boom, woman who survived the Holocaust, a Christian who survived the Holocaust, the book in which I read at Inkster Christian Academy called The Hiding Place. Thank you, Mother. Thank you for educating me. And Corey Ten Boom uh, uh, was a Christian who hid the Jews and ended up going to the Jewish Holocaust uh, camp. Some of y'all never learned that because you went to the wrong schools who uh, let you know, think, make you think America is bad, and if you got an American flag, you are racist. Anyway, she says, if you look at the world, you'll be distressed. Some of us looking at the world too much. If you look within, you'll be depressed. We've been looking at ourselves, I believe, because we were told that we're some, I am somebody. I am powerful. I am beautiful. But the Bible says there's no good thing that rests in this flesh. If you look at God, you'll be at rest. If you're going to make it through uncertain times, if you're going to make it when you don't know how you can make it, Lord, I'm going to look to you. And I'm going to rest with you. Hallelujah. One of my favorite Psalms, I think I read it a few months ago, but I'm going to read it again. Psalm 46, just read verse 1 through 6. I'm going to try not to commentary, give any commentary. I'm going to try not to elaborate. I'm just going to read the Psalm. I think it speaks for itself. We're talking about uncertain times. God, now I'm going to read with emphasis. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Even though the earth be removed, and though the mountain be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, Selah. Now, you know what Selah means. 
Not just think on it, it's a musical interlude. Now I can jump in here and think about it. Mm, mm, think about that. If everything went, the mountains went to the sea, the earth is gone. The Lord is still my refuge. Think about it. Stock market crash. Think about it. Now, now that you thought about it, there is a river whose stream shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle. You should have been in Bible study. You'd be shouting right now. The holy place of the tabernacle of the most high. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. Just as the break of dawn, the nations raged, the kingdoms were moved, he uttered his voice, the earth melted. Even though everything fell apart, there's some things that won't be changed. God is still going to provide for his people. Whew. My final point, point number one was that we got to do what? Defy the odds. Thank y'all, whoever said that. The rest of y'all, come on class. Come on, my principal here, y'all got to act like y'all learning. Number one. You got to defy the odds. Number two, embrace uncertainty. Last point, last point. Number three, take risks. You show me somebody that never take a risk, I'll show you somebody that never done anything. The higher the risk, the higher the reward. I hear these people talking about business owners you know, it's wrong in capitalism because the business owner makes all this money and I work for him and I don't make it. You didn't take the risk that he take. I know I'm telling the truth. The owner got to put all his money in, risk everything, mortgage his house, work while you at home, don't get vacation, you somewhere sitting on the beach, he gave you vacation. The owner got to work. So he got to make his money. Higher the risk, higher the reward. If you want what the owner got, go ahead and do what the owner doing. And most of us, the reason why our businesses fail, because people are so stupid, because you've been on Instagram. On Instagram, they tell you, start a business so you can chill and relax. Okay, business folks, I just want to talk to the business people here. I just want to talk to the business folks. I see you over there. When you started your business, is it true that you worked three to four times harder than you did when you was an employee? If you start a business, you're going to work harder than you ever did working for somebody else. I'm just going to start a business. I'm just going to start a business. So I'm tired of people telling me what to do. When you, before you start a business, you had one person telling you what to do. Once you start a business, you had every customer is your boss. See, y'all like, no, nah, that ain't what they said on Instagram. I can get rich. I can retire by the, in, by the end of the year. Yep, and you got to pay $19.99 for the webinar. $1,999 for the webinar because they making business out of your lazy self. You got to be able to take risks. Frederick Douglass said this. Frederick Douglass is my dude. <sighs> I prayed for freedom for 20 years but received no answer until I prayed with my legs. Let that sink in for a minute. I'm going to read it again. Actually, I'm going to quote it. I prayed for freedom. Y'all know Frederick Douglass was a preacher. Y'all do know that, right? I mean, a gospel preacher. Yeah, they don't tell you that no more because they don't want, you know. I prayed for freedom for 20 years, but did not get an answer until I prayed with my legs. In other words, you got to do something. Some of y'all, God just ain't blessing me. What you doing? God blessing you, you, all this opportunity around you. Ain't nothing but opportunity. In Shelby County, DeSoto County, it ain't nothing but opportunity. In the whole state of Mississippi, nothing but opportunity. How y'all get quiet? <laughs> in Mississippi? In Mississippi. Ain't nothing but opportunity from here straight on down to the Gulf. Opportunity everywhere. Problem is, who going to walk and go take them? Who going to take it? Who going to take it? You got to work through that opportunity. You got to take some risks. That means you got to have some capacity for some deferred gratification. I'm going to go take this course. I'm going to go take this school. I'm going to sit here. And then I'm going to go to school, but just going to school ain't going to fix it. Because if you come out just a dumb dumb repeating everything you heard, you got to come out thinking. Then I'm going to work harder. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I'm going to take a risk. 
I'm going to get married to that man. I'm a, listen, let me tell you something. We got to take risks because let me tell you something. Our life is short. How old are you? 19? You don't have much time left. Now, if you're older than 19, you sure don't got no time left. I know they're trying to tell you you're young and you're 38. You ain't young. You old. You know how I know you old? Because you went to work out and then you didn't come back because you were sore. I know you all. Yeah, they're doing too much. They're doing too much. All you had to do is go up and down. That's all you had to do. <laughs> all you had to do is go up and down, up and down, and you. I'm quit. <laughs> uh, I'm motivating myself. I'm going back tomorrow. I went Friday. I'll be back tomorrow. I told I told you, man. I said I ain't stopped until I can do that whole five set straight. I do a burpee right now. Do a burpee right now. No, it ain't in my message. <laughs> the burpee ain't in my message right now. The devil had me messed up the other day. I said, I'm old enough to be everybody daddy up in here. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. I'm old enough to be everybody daddy. And the Lord said, oh, don't look at them. Look at yourself. <laughs> Galatians 2.20, one of my favorite scriptures. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in. Christ lives in. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. It's no longer my life. I'm going to live a life before God. Now I got a scripture that's not on the screen. Luke 18, verse 27. When you embrace risk. Luke 18, 27 says that what is impossible with men is possible with God. The things that you think is impossible with men, embrace, take the risk. Because the ultimate thing is when you follow in God, there are no risks. What looks like a risk, my children, every one of my children, I would set them up on a table or on a counter and I would step back and I say, jump. Jump, that's a daddy thing to do. Now, mamas don't like it, but let me tell you, mama, mamas don't do what daddies do, but let daddy do his thing. Because the baby needs some daddy stuff that look crazy. They need rough play. Ask the psychologist. Where the psychologist at? Rough, they, they got whole doctoral dissertations on rough, t rough and tumble play with daddy helps develop a child. Don't do that. Just let him do that. So I put my kid up, say, jump. You know, I used to also throw him up in there. Throw him up. Turn, shake hands. How y'all doing? <laughs> then catch him. <laughs> That's just what daddies do. It's to beat him up, body slam him on the bed. Roll on, yeah. Roll on him. Elbow him in the head. So then when they see little Roo Roo at the school, you can't do nothing to me. Daddy ain't did. Bring it on, Cletus. <laughs> But I used to put my children up on the counter, and I step back and say, jump. And I learned about the character of each and one of my children. Some of them just trusted me, just, yeah. Jabari, he would just jump. Whoa, before I was ready for him. I say, jump. He was, whoa, whoa. That boy, whoa, I got to watch him. Then I had others who would not be named that would be like, oh. They look down, look at me. Look down, look at me. Uh, 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 are you sure you're going to catch me? <laughs> then they look down, they look at me again. Then finally, I had to work on them. The trust, you can trust, I'm teaching them trust. Teach them to take a risk, but it really ain't a risk because I ain't going to drop you. God is saying to you now, jump. I got you. It ain't really a risk, but some of us, we, we done called everybody, we done made a post, we done, made, done a whole study, did a survey, do you think I should jump, when should I jump, what should I be wearing when I jump, and God is saying, jump! I got you. It's impossible for you, but I catch you and it's possible to me. One of my favorite scriptures, I'm done, y'all, I'm done, surprisingly, I'm done. Many of your favorite scriptures is Philippians 4.13. Who's that, your favorite scripture? Philippians 4.13, your favorite scripture? How many of y'all know what that says? <laughs> yeah, some of y'all are like, I don't know. Uh, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Steph Curry put on his shoes. How many of that's your favorite scripture? Yeah, raise your hand, raise your hand. It ain't a trick, I'm just asking. Y'all scared, I don't know. 
I don't know you're going to get me. If you love Philippians 4.13, you can't appreciate it unless you embrace Philippians 4.12. You can't quote Philippians 4.13 without quoting Philippians 4.12. Philippians 4.12 really sets up Philippians 4.13. I'm sorry it's not on the slide. Because everything just ain't on the slide today. I know, Philippians 4.12 says, I know how to be a base. I know how to abound. In other words, I know how to be down. I know how to be up. I know everywhere and in all things, I have learned both to be full and hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Then he says, I can do all things. What things? Be low and be high. Be hungry and be full. Suffer need and have. I can do it. So in other words, I can walk. Things didn't go good today. I, I, I'm a, I know how to go through a bad day the same I could go through a good day. I fought my children. Now, another thing I fought my children are we playing outside or they on a team. Act the same way when you lose as when you win. Don't be walking with your head. Hey, we lost today. We ain't nothing. We just dummies. No, hold your head up. I played my best. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. Am I talking? I'm just a winner. I'm just competitive. If you were that competitive, you'll hold your head up even on a losing day. I lost, but I did my best. And guess what? I lost, and I can come back another day. I'm still alive. I can come back another day. The season ain't over. And if it is over, I'll see you next season. I learned how to be up. I learned how to be down. I learned how to suffer leave. But my God shall supply all my need according to his riches in glory. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm sorry. I went down to verse 19. That's verse 19. Yeah. I skipped 13 and went down to Philippians 4, 19. Because that's what he said. I got all this. My God shall supply all my need according to his riches. Because really, he's sitting here, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Listen, y'all, I want to be, I will not be prey. I will pray and chase the lion. Benaniah chased that lion and jumped in that pit. A lion in a pit on a snowy day. And God is saying even right now, I need some lion chasers in this church. God bless each of you. I am so excited to talk about Drive to Prayer. The Lord gave the vision to this ministry, I guess probably last summer, where we come out and we set up a tent and persons are driving on 51 Highway can pull in and we'll pray. We ask them, what is it that you need? And we pray for them and we trust God and touch and agree, pass them out of track and they're going about their business. The purpose of it is because we have to go into the highways and hedges. We've got to come outside of the walls of the church in order to touch those persons who may never come to church. We've had testimonies. We've had people to join the church who've come through Drive Through Prayer. We've had testimonies of healing and deliverance. So we're believing God for great and mighty things as we continue to do this outreach ministry. This is our list today. We take the names down and we put the names on our prayer call and we call the names out to God, trusting God for complete deliverance. And as you can see, we had quite a few people come through, at least 45 or 50 people come through today asking for prayer. So let's go into all the world and let's preach the gospel and let's do like Jesus said and make disciples of all men. God bless you. Every year we see a rise in anxiety, mental illness, addictions, violence, abuse, suicide, and all kinds of hopeless diseases. It is imperative as a church to be militant and advance the kingdom of God. Hence the drive through prayer. We don't wait on people to come to us. Desperate people are running to desperate places, many of the wrong places. We go to them and let them know that God is a deliverer, God is a healer, and that God brings freedom. Standing on the road, calling people to prayer. Cars come in droves and we're able to lead them to the throne of grace. Lead them to our king and realize that there are true solutions to the world's problems. Praying for people, leading people to God, reminding them that they are loved. We are a verbal sign that God is real. That's right. Many people are asking for a sign. We literally bring a sign to them and stand for God.